What's up guys? Uh, it's a Saturday night. Went to a flea market today. And, you know, I've got Philly cheesesteak. Some uh, fries that the restaurant makes their sales with some uh, really good vegetable dip. Which sounds weird, but this thing is phenomenal. I'm surprised when I was vegetable dip. And I could be eating this, finishing it up. Wonderful Philly cheesesteak. But I decided, hey, let's show up the haul today. And what I got was uh, basically some extra shirt in the front, but the comics in the back, I got 120 comics for 20 bucks. So uh, for $5, the first thing I got was uh, two PlayStation games, uh, Colony Wars. And I talked the guy down, and these games are phenomenal, all right? There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. So I figured I'd grab them. This is a two-disc, never heard of the game, never played the game, but, you know. Figure I'd play around if I don't like it, I'll put it on eBay. Found uh, the, I think it's the original Metal Gear, Gear Solid. I might put this on eBay. Like I said, I got them both for five bucks. Both discs, absolutely phenomenal. Nothing wrong with them, no scratches. And this one comes with the original instruction book. So if anybody knows that this is worth any money, let me know. Next thing I got was a little rock and roll history here. I got this for a quarter. And what was so funny is I didn't want to bust up any change, so one of my friends that was there actually gave me the quarter and bought it for me. This is Neon uh, Angel. This is a memoir of the Runaways by the lead singer, Cherry Curry. And for you guys who don't know who the Runaways are, they came out in the 70s. They were all underage. Uh, and it was Joan Jett, Lita Ford. Can't believe I'm going forgetting the other names. Uh, Jessica Fox, I think. And I don't remember the drummer's name and stuff. But, uh, you know, I think this came out because they had a movie come out about three years ago about the Runaways. So it'll be interesting to see if this book's any good. And, of course, it comes with rock and roll photos, you know. So, there's your cherry bomb, Mom and Dad. Anyway, so, under the books. <clears throat> I got two of these. Like I said, all these comics for 20 bucks. So I'll try to get through them because they're 120 so hang in there. But, basically, I got two copies of this. Ghost Manor from Charlton Comics, number 52. Thumbs up to Steve Ogden for turning me on to Charlton Horror. Plus, he just sent me a package I'll be putting in a video in the future. But, anyway... Uh, these are reprints from 1972, I found out, and I opened them up, but they're in pristine condition. Uh, and, of course, it's Steve Ditko stuff. So, we got two of those. Number uh, 52. I'm so happy to find this. These are in mint condition. This came out, like, in the mid-90s, maybe around 96 or so. Now i got to know. This is Mobius Comics. I got the first two issues. Uh, 1996 is when they came out. And he's a French illustrator, made famous in heavy metal. He uh, did all the design work, clothes, spaceships, everything for Fifth Element. The guy's a legend, you know. So I got one and two of those. It looks like he's got some Blackberry in this. And he's got his, I always crack up, he's got his wingless thunder chicken in there. <laughs> you know, it cracks me up. Uh, and a lot of these comics, I've you know, a few of them I've already had, but I feel like I was saving them because this guy had a lot of great comics. But as I was pulling stuff on, there was comics that had stickers on them, and they were water damaged, and I couldn't just leave some of these comics here. So what I got here is League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Volume 2, Number 6, the last of the series back then. I've already got this, but hey, it's an extra, it was a quarter, and I'm saving it. Uh, you know, Alan Moore, great, so there you go. Uh, he threw this in for free. It's a beat-up copy of The Power of Warlock, Number 14. It's Jim Starlin, Steve Viola, um, you know... Just throw it over there with my trashed up Warlock books. Uh, got this, An Amazing Heroes, number 108. I think this is from the mid-80s. This is when the question in the Atom came back. So, had to get that. And, you know, a lot of people call me the Howlerpedia on here and stuff. It's just because I've read this stuff and retained it over the years. This is where Amazing Heroes, Wizard Comics, word of mouth, uh, talking comics with people, and stuff like that, talking to some creators when we get cons and stuff is where, you know, you can learn a lot of stuff. Really excited to get this. Uh, it's only the issue, it's a four issue uh, mini series, but I got issue three and four. I was talking to Constant Bromstar about this on one of our finally designed shows. This is Brian Azzarello and Richard Corbin doing the Hulk. And Corbin is another one of those guys. He's a heavy metal guy. He's been on the independent scene forever. Um, just a, it's just, it just blew my mind that when Casada came on, he started pulling all these guys out and he sticks Corbin on the Hulk. It, which is very cool. Got me a Batman Black and White number three from the 90s. It's a Barry Winsler Smith cover. 
This has a Denny O'Neill story. This was uh, an anthology series. It was a mini series that came out. Uh, I want to say there was maybe four of them or six. I can't remember. But uh, everybody did a solo story, and they're all in black and white. These weren't in continuity. Just they did their take on Batman. I was real happy to find this Saint of Killers number one. This is a preacher special mini series. There were four of them, and the Saint of Killers is just one of those great, great stories. You know, where you know, just you know, an evil. Evil Western with some, uh, with that preacher twist there and stuff. Satan Killers was a badass, okay? Had to get this. Vertigo Jam number one from the 90s. Okay, it's got, this is like, to me, this is when Vertigo was at its peak, man. You had Sandman going. Hellblazer was just running all over the place. You had Grant Morrison on the Doom Patrol. And then they started adding Shade the Changing Man and other titles to it. Um, just a really good book. So, and this has got Mike Allard in it, uh, Nancy Collins, James Delano, Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon, Neil Gaiman. Uh, just all kinds of names I can go on and on. Uh, just a bunch of short stories. The Sandman story, Hellblazer story, Animal Man. Grant Morrison was on Animal Man. I think he'd already left by the time I went to Vertigo. Doom Patrol, Swamp Thing, Kid Eternity. It's great stuff. Though. All right, then, you know, going on with my heavy metal thing, man. There's a miniseries, a five-issue miniseries that came out in the 90s, and I've got number one. I found number two of Captain Stern of a heavy metal fame, very, uh, very uh, Bernie Wrightson uh, series. So three more to go. And then I got these. These are a little bit uh, water damaged on the back and stuff, but they were less than a quarter a piece. This is uh, towards this is this some uh, Avengers books when Kurt Busiek was on it. Uh, number forty four, number forty seven. I uh, hope the glare's not showing up. Forty nine, some Kong the Conqueror for you. I uh, love this cover. Um, this is number 52. And, you know, they're going for you guys out there that are really looking. They're going back to the original numbering below that. It says 52 of the new series, but 467. Um, 53. Somebody was really playing around with some cool covers here. And 54. Like I said, those are water damage and stuff, but that's all right. <clears throat> but like I said, I was saving books. I wanted to read some music. Anyway, and here's another one. I couldn't believe I, I didn't spot this when I bought it. But this is Doom Patrol number 53, back when Grant Morrison was writing it. If there is one issue to get, yes, somebody has put a Batman sticker on it. Uh, I didn't catch that until I got ready for this video. But this is sort of a story that Morrison wrote that's kind of like, it takes the Doom Patrol, but it's a tribute to, um, it's a tribute to, uh, like, Marvel of the 60s, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four. This is Hellblazer in a costume. This is your Phantom Stranger. You know, and it's got that Kirby feel to it. And they've turned the Doom Patrol to where, um, you know, a bunch of Vertigo characters done Marvel 60 style. Manhattan X actually shaped like a man. But they bring in the Doom Patrol, man. It's like Fantastic Four all of a sudden. There's the thing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, Robot Man is kind of like taking the role of Ben Grimm. And then you got like Negative Man being the Human Torch making fun of him. And then, of course, you got uh, Rita Wilson being like the Invisible Girl and... The chief being like the Reed Richards and stuff. But, you know, just the living guru. I mean, it's just a really cool issue. It's issue number 53 of Doom Patrol. Alright, these were upgrades. Because I've already got these issues. But in the early 90s, 1990 probably. Uh, John Byrne came on there and started Namor the Submariner. There's number two with the Griffin. Number eight. Number nine. Like I said, these are just upgrades. These have been bags, so they were saved. Number 10, we're getting the invaders coming back. Number 11, that was uh, Master Man and uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Warrior Woman, if, for you uh, invaders fans out there from back in the 70s. And then we got the full flown invaders fight again. You know, he brought the original Human Torch back in the West Coast Avengers at the time. And then I needed this one to complete the Star uh, a Quasar set. This is a, a, has a Thanos appearance. This is number 26. And it's also an Infinity Gauntlet uh, crossover. Just a cool, quirky Mark Greenwald stuff, you know. I never thought I'd go back and try to get Quasar, but, you know, kind of enjoying them. And then uh, these are a little bit damaged on the back, but I got them. They're Alan Moore. Alan Moore did a two-part story uh, back in the 80s for Vigilante, <clears throat> for you Alan Moore fans. Uh, two copies of number 17. Um, one's a little bit more damaged than the other, but I figured I'd just go ahead and pick them up. They're so cheap. And yes, I got a power pack. We're going backwards in time, if you see this. I got this one because it's a Walt Simonson cover, and it's got Curse from uh, his Thor run, and uh, it's a Secret Wars 2 crossover. 
You know, I'm, I'm trying to get the Crisis on the Infinite Earth and Secret uh, Wars 2 crossovers complete. You know. Then I got this. This is from PC Comics. Um, this is a Mike Grell Star Slayer Log of the Jolly Roger number one origin issue. I figured why not? You know, it's in really good shape. Um, cover's kind of cool. And, you know, a little something different to look at there. Hope the glare is not too bad. Oh, and we're melting. All right, and being the 80s kid that I am, looking at some of these books, I had to save them. I didn't really want these. I got number one in the back of this, but this is where Marvel tried to start their own line of toys back then because action figures were huge in the 80s um, and affordable. And so they came on and they invented the saga of the Crystal, Crystar, uh, Crystal Warrior. So, um, you know, and I think John Romita Jr. helped design these. I'm not sure. But anyway, here's number two. The covers just get phenomenal. Number 40 and number 40. Number four, number five. I love that cover. I don't think it's coming up. It's a crystal woman. And it's got like this cool airbrush sort of purple in the back. And there's a king outlined in there. I don't think it's going to show up hidden in that cover. Number six, we got a Nightcrawler appearance. You know, nothing says the 80s. I mean, look at the advertisements on the back. Frogger game. What is that for? Uh, from Parker Brothers. Probably a ColecoVision, Atari 5200, Atari Home Computers, Commodore 4, uh, Commodore VIC-20, and Television, Atari 2600, and Texas Instruments. I mean, just that's just how it goes back in the day. They even had a Popeye game for you Popeye fans out there. All right, number seven. Number eight. I mean, you know, this looks like it might be, you know, it's on thing number nine. Gotta have a dragon. Looks like it might be a Charles Vest cover. I don't know. I bet that is. You know, dragon going on. Number ten. Gotta have your warrior woman. Number eleven. They threw an alpha flight for some reason. Special double size last issue. Okay, I thought there was twelve. So, I do that. Apparently I'm only missing maybe two issues, one issue. That's cool. Alright, and since, you know, we've been talking John Byrne and stuff like that, I've read all sorts of Alpha Flight, but I think it's time to build back up what I had. So, like I said, these were so cheap, I said, why not? And they're bagged, they're in great shape. Number 12, number 14, number 15, number 16, gotta love Puck. And I said Puck with a P. Number 18. Number 19. Introducing Talisman. Number 20. Gilded Lady. The Gilded Lily. Alright guys. And I just had to get these. I actually went back to get these. And they had a few more. But some guys already there picking up quite a few. So I probably would have had a full run from 122 up until the last issue of 152. But somebody kind of beat me to it. That's what, you, that's what I get for hesitating. Here is the Defenders, okay? 122, and I had to get this one because it's got Elf with a Gun in it. That's just a Steve Gerber character. I hope he wrote this and stuff, and he had very limited appearances. It always cracked me up that he had a character, and its name was Elf with a Gun. See? Elf with a Gun, staring down the Defenders. That just cracks me up. Uh, 123, just in case uh, it was a two-part story. For some reason, the vision's there. And that is a beautiful color by, I think, Kelly Plunkett. I don't know. I really like that cover for some reason. You know, you got a real non-muscular kind of thin vision there. And then you got, like, you know, this is the Dungeons and Dragons age where everybody was role-playing. So there you go. Uh, then we go into the new Defenders where they brought in uh, the Beast and Angel. Uh, they kept Valkyrie, brought in Moondragon and Iceman. So you had three of the original X-Men in there. Uh, 126, 127, Beware It's Assistant Editor Month, and that's another one. I think I'm going to do a video where it's just the big hands. There's these, all kinds of comics where this is one of those comic book cliches where you just have a giant hand grabbing somebody. Okay, 128, that's got to be a sink of, that's a Kevin Nolan cover. Early Kevin Nolan, man. I love that sketchiness he put into it. Love these covers, if anything, even if I put them on eBay. Um, number 130. Loved how they got these covers tried to take off in the 80s. 132. 137. I've owned that. I probably still have a beat up issue back there. The Gargoyle. What did, I probably said the Demon a minute ago. It's Gargoyle. 140. 
143. I've read that issue quite a bit. Uh, 146, this is when the cover started. I love that cover again. Yeah. 148, looks like they go all out action. 149, I think the angel was blind for a little bit. Or he's just trying to look really cool in his shades. Probably a Corey, uh, Corey Hart fan. Wears his sunglasses at night. And then there's 151, seems like they had a character named Cloud. And they brought in a uh, Atlantean warrior. That's her in the back here. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking wrong. But this but this character here, I cannot remember his name. Manslaughter, maybe? But uh, I thought he was an interesting character. And they also brought in the interloper or something like that. It's this real mountain man looking kind of guy. Or uh, carried a staff and had a big brown jacket, almost a trench coat on. And a big hat to go with it. And then 152. And you had to get this one because this is a Secret Wars 2 crossover. The last issue of the Defenders. And it built up, it helped build up into X Factor number one in '85 when they brought back Jean Grey. All right, now here's where my mouth drops. And this is why I didn't pick up a bunch of Defenders the first time around. All right, I think there's like a 40 issue run of Walt Simonson's uh, Mighty Thor here, all bagged in really good shape. So we start with 339, and I almost want to say this is the first appearance of Beta Ray Bill. Uh, the alien who was able to pick up uh, Thor's hammer and Odin made him Stormbringer his own. Yeah, it might be wrong. 39. 339. I hope that glare is not too bad. 340. I have to pull this up. 341. And while Simpsons run on this in the early 80s is considered a classic run. And I've read bits and pieces and a lot of his stuff, but I didn't really read the earlier stuff. 343. Shout out to Curvis Man, our big Thor aficionado on here. 344, Baldar the Brave, taking on a bunch of demons. Alright, 345, first appearance of, uh, going blank on this elf. But I think, uh, I think he pops up in the new Thor movie. So, 346 has got a stain on it, but that's okay. Looks like he's fighting the dogs of war. Weird snouts. <laughs> All right, three forty-seven. God, what is that else name? Dolkov? No, that's complete. Somebody completely different. Huh? Maybe it starts with an M. Three forty-eight. Never saw that comic in my life. Three forty-nine. The brother of Odin. Looks like it's a tale of Odin in the past, considering that he has two eyes. This is probably where they fought. Um, who did he fight? Surtur. Anyway, I think this is the story where he lost his eye and probably his two brothers. I'm really glad to see this one. Issue 350. These anniversary issues are usually hard to find, even if they are not worth any money. Hard to complete collection. 351. Just a badass Thor staring at you. 352. Got the Vision again. He popped up a lot in the 80s there. Looks like you got the Warriors 3 and the little Fantastic Four and Beta Ray Bill and some X-Men. And then 353, the finale of the Surtur Saga. I've read this issue, so good stuff. 354, little Hell, Hela, Hela. 355, looks like he's taking on some kind of giant or something. 356, Hercules being a joke, being a jerk. <laughs> joke, jerk, like there's a difference. 357, man, this is running long. 358, Peter Ray Bill. 359, 360, 361, he's got his goats, probably his belt of strength going on, it looks like figure he's trying to fight the Midgard Serpent if I had to guess, something that big, and it's got a chain on it, so maybe it's not, I don't know, it's just a giant wolf, 362, first blood, last man, I'm trying to think, but I think this was one of those issues in the 80s that every kid had because the Executioner uh, gets to redeem himself after being a villain all those years. And then the classic, the classic, I love this story, man. I think Loki put a curse on Thor and he gets turned into a frog and you get into this this whole world of the frogs of Central Park and they turn around and they uh, are having a war going on with the rats. You know, he becomes Thunder Frog for him. 365. I don't know how that fits in. And then 366, what do you call a six foot six fighting mad frog? Answer inside. Thunder frog. 
Alright, 368. I love Thor with the beard. I think he got all scarred up. 369. Oh no, he's fighting his friend Baldur. 371. Peace comes to town. I don't know what the hell this is or who that character is supposed to be. Looks ridiculous, so let's hope it's better. And then we have it. Marvel Fanfare. I did get some numbers, but there's no way I'm passing these up. Marvel Fanfare number 6. Glorious cover on the back. A little Charles Vest, Doctor Strange. Number 7. The Blob, the Hulk. Uh, Untouchable. Eunice the Untouchable, maybe? Would that be his name? You know, and then a little Daredevil there from 82. Number 8. Looks like somebody else in there. And a great P. Craig Russell back cover. Look at that. I'm talking about Tarzan, Jungle Boy, or something. Number 11, Black Widow, George Perez, What's Not to Love. More great P. Craig Russell on the back. Uh, part 2, apparently. Number 12, A Marvel Fanfare. Number 16. Great stuff. A little Hitler action there. Number 17. A little Hulk action. Number 22, Doc Ock has Iron Man scared to death. Oh, looks like he's got uh, Sinister Six coming at him or something. Some more villains. Gray, oh, Gray Gargoyle, Electro, and Sandman. Huh. I love these covers, man. Shanna the She-Devil. I don't know who did these covers, man. Looks like Joe Gisco. Can't wait to crack open and find out who did it. Oh, beautiful. What we got on the back? Yeah, it's some kind of free-for-all. 58. Looks like I'm missing an issue or two. Beautiful cover once again. Get the glare off. Good stuff. Great P. Craig Russell. Oh, Sandy Plunkett did this one. Look at that art. Oh. Beautiful. Oh, 59. Love, love, love that cover. Sexy, sexy, sexy. Very nice. Looks like a little homage to Marvel Romance. Yep, nothing like a woman on standing on a phallic symbol ready to, you know, cut the foreskin. Alright, then I found some Micronauts. Number 15, and these are in pristine condition. These are from the late 70s. Mike Golden covers. Um, I, know, I know he didn't do the insides, number 19. Another giant hand cover. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Go through my collection and find a bunch of giant hand covers. Number 20. 21, 22, 23, probably be easier for me to move the camera up, then I don't feel like shaking it, 24, 25, and we're getting close to done. And then we come up here and we found some Marvel Spotlight, these are from 1980 and probably a little bit earlier. Marvel Spotlight on Captain Universe. I grabbed these because it looks like it's Ditko. And it should be. There's Marvel Spotlight number 9. Marvel Spotlight number 10. Captain Universe possessed a uh, woman this time. And number 11. Claws of the Cat. And then I got I found these Marvel Premieres from the 70s. That's the Torpedo. Number 39. Number 40 with the Torpedo. I think that's his name. It seems like there's a Lady Torpedo that popped up in New Warriors years later. And then I had to get this Marvel uh, Premiere number 41, Seeker 3000, Dave Cochran Goodness. All right, hanging in there. Thanks for the guys. Did not mean to run that long, but, you know, we all always apologize when we're looking at our books. So there you go. Later, guys.